<laughs> Welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Good to see you all. We're back Thursday and what a day. Heaps to get through. I don't want to waste too much time. Started the photos on the new on this week's video. They're looking pretty good. Um, actually better than what I thought. So it's uh, I did a trip down, a bike ride around Frio. It's supposed to be a rainy day. I was going to get all those beautiful puddles in the water, puddles in the road, reflections and all that, that beautiful winter stuff that us photographers love. And there was stuff all rain, but it actually turned out pretty good. And I think I've got a good set of photos to come out a little bit something different, not a full landscapey sort of stuff, more a city one like my old Perf one. And I think it's got, yeah, it's looking pretty good at the moment. So that's, that's pretty good. We've got a heap of tech news. Uh, the Insta360, we've got that to talk about. We've got some Canon, we've got some FPV drones, we've got Xboxes, Skydios, DJIs, heaps of drone stuff. Uh, and yeah, let's get into this, eh? It's going to be a big one. I'm probably going to, hopefully I can get in before time. It runs out on the M50. <laughs> Rightio, um, first of all, there's a little Kickstarter coming out. I'm not sure if you've heard of them before, but said a while back, uh, FPV drones uh, are the new it thing. And I think they're going to be bigger and bigger in 2021. I think it's they're really going to explode. Um, much like drones were the thing, FPV drones now give the ability to do get really close and personal to give off just amazing images for B-roll, uh, to show landscapes in a totally different way, uh, as well as FPV racing drones and all that is, is getting bigger. There's big money for that. There's professionals out there making a career out of flying FPV drones already. Um, I think it's definitely a sport of the future. DJI put a lot of money into the, their tank games in China last year. And it was pretty, I don't think it's, and it's huge there. I don't think people are going to sit around and watch the tanks shooting little air darts at each other. It just wasn't the same. Whereas Flying racing drones at high speed, it, like Formula One cars, like that. Anything to do with racing, high speed, high adrenaline, uh, yeah, that always gets people excited. Uh, I think that's going to go really well. I think it's going to be a, a big sport for the future in the next five five years, definitely. Um, and that is sort of sort of spilled over into the creative world with the FPVs. They've uh, they're just like some of the footage you see is just amazing. There's some really really amazing people out there that build their own ones and you probably don't need super amounts of knowledge you just need to know what goes with what um, and there is ways you can't do that I know Potato Jet's been getting into it Matty Hoppy has been getting into it so there's a fair few big YouTubers delving into that FPV area and that as a sort of oh, just I guess it's a bit of a hobby for them and a bit of fun and it's also provides some great footage for their channel so <clears throat> I think it's definitely one of those ones that's growing now, there's a mob coming out on Kickstarter, which is what I thought would have probably come and ha happened with maybe DJI. I thought DJI might, might have come out with it. But they're a company called Beagle Nova. They actually do do little drone kits. They make uh, ultralight motors uh, that you can basically put together. They sell parts already for the FPV drone industry. They got a Kickstarter on the 3rd of November releasing. It's for a Beagle Nova. Uh, Beagle Nova. Nova's, I think, the model brand or model name sorry <laughs> um and it's fpv drone no prices as yet obviously just this is limited specs that they've given us uh it's going to come in a kit so everything you need to put it together and go flying fpv so that is awesome yeah for us people that haven't done it before this is a great entry point to get into it to go and have a play and have a suss out um a 4k 60 frames per second and 30 frames, 1080, 120 frames a second, 60, 30. It's going to be under 250 grams, so you don't need a license. It's going to come with two batteries. You'll, both will do six minutes. Now, FBV, you don't get a lot of, it's just, they suck a lot of power because they're all high speed stuff. Um, so you get two lots of six minutes out of those batteries. So you'll get 12 minutes of flying or racing or whatever you want to do. But generally, six minutes if you prep ahead and you know what you're going to do. I guess it's probably okay, or it's probably enough to get the shots you want to get. So I think that's going to be pretty interesting. I'll, I'll keep you updated when it does release and give you the, like, the full details, prices, and what it's going to cost and if it's sort of going to be worthwhile. 
as I said, they're not a, just like an instant startup. They actually have got business and they're actually selling parts and they have been there for a while. So it's not one of those Kickstarters where it was probably not going to happen or may or may not happen. It's a 50-50 whoever you're going to lose your money. Um, this is probably like a, a genuine one, much like Peak Design and some of those other guys that have started on there and they've developed a business and they've got that business going. So I think it's going to be pretty interesting. And I think DJI, I think you'll see DJI, we've talked, they were looking at it. I think they're probably in the process too in 2021 to start thinking about making their own FPV kits um, ready to go to just whack it together and make it modular so people can chop and change and individualize it. And I think that's going to be a big part of 2021 for the whole tech industry. Uh, phones are getting pretty boring. There's only so much you can do before they cost $5,000, which is a laptop. So what are they going to do next? It's going to be the next sort of tech bubble. I think drones and FPV droning is a great industry. Same as VR, VR, FPV drones, similar sort of a cross pass, I guess. Both goggles, you're in a virtual reality pretty much where drones, is you're still in real life and you're still getting, at least you're getting out and getting into the uh, landscape and seeing stuff. Uh, and yeah, as I said, some of the footage is just insane. So definitely wait to check that out. Now, the big one of the day, Insta360 last night, it was last night here for us, it was obviously morning yesterday. Um, they've got their new camera out, the 360X2. Uh, look, it's not cheap, it's a thousand. Basically, you can get the base model, I think it's like $700. You're not gonna buy that if you're getting straight into it uh, because you need the, it definitely need the extender pole. You're going to need the covers and the other bits and pieces, the spare battery. So you, look, realistically, if you're going to buy into the system, you're going to go straight for the ultimate kit. That's currently already, it was already out of stock last night when I looked. Uh, so that was crazy. Oh, sorry, this morning. So I was already sold out. The ultimate kits, they're all gone. Uh, so they'll be, they'll be waiting for a while. They're 1050 bucks Australian just for that, uh, for this camera. It's uh, pretty wild. I'll try and get through all the stuff on it. I've got a big list of stuff here. It's uh, a lot of fu funky stuff on it. It's done pretty well. I think they've come. They've added a lot of new stuff on compared to the old one. Um, the biggest one, obviously, is it's now waterproof, 10 meters. So they're really, really taking it to GoPro and to DJI uh, in this in that action camera market. You've now got a full 360. A camera that's 10 meters waterproof so you can have it everywhere uh it's yeah pretty insane now it's 5.7k full 360 obviously uh it's got codex h265 capture it's got just insane amount of uh different modes you've got steady cam mode so you can use it as a video and you get that full gyroscopic effect uh crazy um Better st stabilization, I think it's a six six axis gyro from memory. I'm uh, pretty much 100% sure on that. I'm pretty sure it's yeah, six axis. So it's like the stabilization is just ridiculous. So yeah, you definitely don't have to worry about that. So you've got that steady cam you can film with. I'm just using one of the cameras and just get ultra smooth. Like uh, I think Potato Jet was running alongside Sam, his assistant full sprint running and it didn't even look like it was buckling like it's like next level over the new gopro 9 so even that like you could just see it well this you just can't see anything so it's very very cool um you got the invisible selfie stick which is the big key component of this thing this is the thing that allows you to stick it on the end of this stick and that's why i said you're not going to just buy the camera because you need that stick to make it worthwhile you're not going to hold it out because you'll see your arm this stick is the black paint basically self clears it out of the footage. So when you hold it out, it basically looks like there's a camera six or five or six feet away from you facing back at you and you can get every angle known to man. Uh, very, very cool. Four mics on it. So that's a new thing. They've upgraded the audio on it. They've just done a firmware upgrade as well to make sure that works. Four audio, uh, the four microphones are there to sort of cancel out wind noise and stuff like that. Um, the guys did have some audio tests, but it was all beta versions. And look, it didn't sound amazing. Like all action cameras, they don't sound amazing. You're going in and out of water. You can't have you can't have dead cats on it underwater. So or when it's getting wet, so it makes it a little bit tricky. You're not you're not really using it for amazing sound. Uh, but yeah, you've still got four mics. They are trying to do some stuff there. 
you've got AI editing, you can basically go through, and I think one of the big key features from looking at the stuff was basically you can film it, hold it out here and just do your thing, and then you can frame it up later. So you can come back through and using your phone, you can watch the footage back and you can basically frame it by looking at where you want to go with the phone and it will record all where you're looking. So it sort of automatically frames it with your camera while you're watching the footage. It just, that was very cool. Then once you're happy with that and the flow you've got there, you can then download that to your computer to put into your Premiere Pro to add to your videos. So just some very, very cool software stuff they've done and they seem to be leading the way on the action cam. GoPro's very finicky. Like uh, just time lapses, trying to get them in and out of the GoPro quick app is sometimes painful. I'm, I'm thinking half the time I just go get my time lapses and just dump the files into Prem and compress them and just make them make them up as a smooth flow myself. It's just sometimes easier. The GoPro Quick is not the best software. They need to really work on that side. It seems Insta360 has really done some homework here and they've made it a lot easier to get those, that to make what you want on the phone or while well, using your phone. Once you're happy with how everything is, dump that in and so you can actually use it to go and do some stuff. Um, it's got time shift, it's got voice control, it's got that horizon lock that the GoPro 9 had, so that's all locked in there. It's got uh, the bullet time, so that's that one where you see them where it looks like the camera's swinging around them and that you can't see anything. That's basically that selfie stick with the new one's got string on it. Uh, Potato Jet did say that the only problem with that was the camera does flip, so you, de you do get to see a little bit of the, the stitch the electronic stitch they use to put the uh, image together, you can pick that up a bit more. So it's probably better to use the old steel one with the handle, that works out better. Uh, you can freeze yourself in time, so you can be in mid running, stop mid air, then you can have it freeze there, wait, and then keep going. So that was cool. It also has tracking subjects, so you can lock onto a subject on the touchpad, and it's got a little nice color screen there which is I think 40% bigger or something so you can lock onto a subject and then just hold it out and so if you got your dog there I think it was a good example potato jet used and he just locked on one of the dogs and just held it out and it just kept perfect focus as that the focal point was that dog so it was always in focus so that was very cool um, easier stop motion mix it's got Dolby zoom mixed in there shadow clone and clone trail now they were very very cool little uh, tricks basically so you could sort of if someone's running so if you've got the screen here and here where I am across me you could have like one frame of me here then one frame of me here then one frame of me here all in the same image so it looks like yeah that makes sense you'll see the video I'm sure if you go check it out very very cool feature and I'm sure we're going to see a heap of YouTube videos over the next couple couple of months with all these new little funky edits in there showing off that that technology. So I thought that was pretty cool and, and, a, and a lot of fun to play with. Uh, auto frame, and you can get a dive cover for it. And if you want to film underneath the water, you'll need and get good images. It does have a underwater sort of auto adjust, so it'll, it'll fix the colors from underwater. So that was really cool. You will want to put the dive cover on it, even though you, it is waterproof for 10 meters. The, it won't let you do the 360 without the cover on it. Uh, that, that's good for 45 meters. So if you are doing a lot of diving and you want that 360 image, uh, definitely you can use it, but you'll need to get that cover. That'll be an extra. That doesn't come in the ultimate kit. Um, it's got, and that's that AquaVision filter. That was the one I meant that'll filter the colors. And it does, a by the looks of it, it looks like a really good job of they're doing. Uh, pure shot low light um, as well in it. So they're doing a lot of stuff with low light. The camera's a F2 aperture, I think. And so it's got a good chance there to get some good low light performance. Anything under 2.8 should help you out a lot in that regards. HDR. Now you can control it with your Apple Watch. Um, mine's getting charged at the moment. But you can control it with your Apple Watch or your iPhone. You're able to control it and do whatever you want. So if you want to start and stop it, you can do that straight from your watch. You don't have to go and grab your phone. You can do all that, which is good if you're recording because that's waterproof. You don't have to. You can leave your leave your phone on the, I guess, on the beach or on the side or with someone. You can jump in the water and do all your things and start and stop it as you as you wish. So another good little aspect of it. So said so they really worked hard on the software and I think they did a great job in that regards. Um, 
AirPods work too. And this was another good thing. The AirPod Pros work, the wireless, so you can actually talk in. So if you are going to do a bit of a podcast or anything like that and you want to get some footage and that's all you've got, it's your one-man band, uh, you can put these in. This will record your sound so you get a good, clear sound. Record that straight to there so you don't have to worry about those microphones. However good or bad, the ugly they end up being, uh, it's going to probably give you a lot better sound and you're probably going to get enough to put up on YouTube so that, or Reels or <clears throat> wherever you put a TikTok. So I think that'll be really cool. And they've really, as I said, they've really thought about software and how it's going to be used and to make it easy for people. So very cool. Um, now it's got a 1630 uh, milliamp battery. That's 55% bigger than the last one, which was 1050. Uh, that live screen is 40%, so I was correct with that. And it's got a pre you can preview the video for there. It's a little round screen, which I thought was pretty aesthetically pleasing, I guess, is probably the good terminology. <laughs> Big words for me today. <laughs> uh, you can also overlay GPS stats, which I think the GoPro used to be able to do. Not many really did it, but if you wanted to, if you're on a bike and you want to record speed and times or whatever like that, you can whack that on there, whatever makes you feel good. Uh, the lens is basically a 7.2 focal length, ISO 100 to 3200, so that's good because that 3200, that's going to give you a chance to get some decent low light, um, and I think that'll make a big difference. White balance, 2700, all the way different segments up to 7500. Now it'll do 5.7K in 30, 25, and 24 frames a second, 4K at 50 and 30, and 3K it'll do 100 frames a second and 30. Um, Steadicam mode, 50, 30, and HD mode, um, yeah, it'll do 2.5K. I'm not sure if that's right. I think I've written that round wrong. <laughs> My bad. Um, Rightio. Yep, nothing else than that. 6 axis gyroscope. Now, the other big key feature upgrade with this, um, and you'll find it with the Insta R, so that was like the GoPro style Insta 360. Now, that had a 90 megabits per second bit rate, so that, that's that speed to get the data in, so you get it, it actually helps on getting a clearer picture. Well, this has gone up to 100 megabits, so it's even clearer than that. Um, I think I did look at one, I think uh, David Manning had it, and he showed the difference between the 90 and the 100, and you could see it was picking up a lot more texture on the on the new uh, with the 100 bit rates compared to that old to that oh, that old. It's only I think last year the uh, that um, <clears throat> normal action cam style Insta 361. So the R, I think. So that that was really cool. USB C for the charging. You know, you get 85 minutes on a charge. That's awesome. That's a plenty of time. Issue, I guess, sort of a semi issue, minus 20 to plus 40 degrees operating range. Uh, I guess the, yes, the snowboarders, skiers are big part of that, so the minus 20, understand that. Plus 40, mm, uh, tricky in Australia, we regularly get over plus 40 degrees here, anywhere up to mid to high 50s Celsius. So, and I'm assuming Africa and some other places you're going to get that. So the high temperatures, I know my GoPro 7 does shut down and direct heat if it's recording in the sun. Uh, it can't handle it. So it'd be interesting to see actually how that goes in the heat. 149 grams. Um, you'll get uh, 80 minutes of 5K footage. And you've got three different color profiles too. So you've got a vivid, a standard, and you can shoot and log if you are going to grade it at the back end. So look, I think they've done. And oh, sorry, last but not least raw photos out of it. Uh, does take photos, I guess it's not really a photo camera, but you can take them and you can take them in raw. So you've got that ability, if that's all you've got, you can take a snap and then you bring it back and fine tune it and do what you, do what we all do and get that edit done. You might be, this might give you a chance to get that once in a lifetime shot in the water under a wave or something. Uh, yeah, it's like possibilities are endless with, once it becomes waterproof, very, very cool. Um, yeah, sorry, there's a heat to get in there. A heap of uh, tech there thought and, and as I said I've a couple of times I think making it accessible making it accessible giving it plenty of options and a lot on the software side and easy for people to get to and use and do some amazing things uh, the simpler you can make the tech and and fun, more fun it is 
more people are going to buy it. Now, at a thousand dollars, holy hell, that's it's not anyone's pocket change. It's a lot of moolah to, to dump on a little action cam. It is tiny. You can put it in your pocket. You get the little kit. I'm sure you get a little case or something with the with the stick and everything in it. So I'm sure it'll fit into a camera bag. No dramas. Definitely use it. Would I like it? I'd love it. I think it'd be very very cool. Uh, doing some canyons and getting 360 of the canyons and being able to give that sort of depth percep perception. Um, can I afford it at the moment? No, I can't. <laughs> if I win set for life, maybe I can. Never know. Uh, I'll definitely get one if I win set for life, I think. But look, hey, it's very, very cool. If you've got the old one, instantly, yeah, it, it's upgrade. It's waterproof. It's a no-brainer. But I think the old ones will start going down. I did look on there today to see if the old ones are starting to come down. They're about 700 bucks. So still a little bit XE. I think they'll drop in price rapidly because these are going to sell. Already they're selling out. So they're gonna. if you want one, you better get in tonight or you're going to be waiting a little bit. Uh, Xbox X unboxing. Uh, look, big difference I did notice. It was basically the same thing, that stupid embargo thing where you can unbox it, but then you're going to come back and you can use it now a week later. It's actually starting to become a little bit annoying in that regards. Uh, it's a big difference. One terabyte to start off with. Remember I said PlayStation yesterday was 825 gig for some reason? Well, Microsoft's a bit more normal in that regards. It's one terabyte to start with. 4K 120 frames, 8K HDR, 4K Blu-ray, and wireless networking. Uh, can't wait for the full reviews on both of them. I'm saying probably a week from now when they all get released. We'll start seeing all the footage and checking it all out. So very, very cool. Into some drone stuff. Skydio X2. Now, we know about the Skydios, and they're still hard to get hold of. They're a brilliant little drone. Great for tracking if you're doing action stuff and you want to, or you just want to go out by yourself, get the beacon. Strap on, it'll follow you. Great battery life, great video, and the best tracking out of all the drones. Uh, they've got a commercial drone come out. Um, it doesn't have prices yet, hasn't released, but they're saying 100 times zoom. It's got a FLIR 320 by 256, and that's four times the um, uh, the vision of the existing one on the Mavic Pro. It's like four times better than the Mavic Pro, that uh, enterprise thermal camera. So the FLIR side's really, really good. 35 minute flight time, six miles range, which is just insane. Uh, 180 degree vertical view, so massive view up and down. You can fly it day and night, it's got built in lights. It can fly full radar at night time, so you don't even have to see anything. Full sensors, it can do all that. Um, yeah, built in strobe light, and it yeah, runs on GPS at night, so it's an amazing bit of kit. If you're looking for something for work or your business and you're looking at a drone, that Mavic Enterprise range has now got a really good competitor with that Skydio X2 that should be releasing in December this year. So if you're on the lookout and you're about to buy them, maybe wait a month to see what your options are. Look, these guys do some fantastic kit. Uh, that might be a good option. On drones, the DJI Inspire 3 uh, is going to, uh, has been a sort of, uh, Ken Heron announced that it's sort of definitely coming. It's been got pushed back to the second half of 2021 because the Mavic 3 and the Mini 2 are coming out early next year. So that's pretty much locked and loaded. We've got the Mavic 3 and the Mini 2 coming out. The Mini I've got is just amazing. Uh, can't wait to see what they bring with the Mavic 3 and the 2. So that'll be cool. So if I guess if you're looking to sell your Mavic or your Mini, uh, probably February, you won't want to wait too long past February, uh, probably around March or something, it's probably going to drop a little bit in value. So if you want to get that cash back around then, maybe look at selling your kit, waiting for the new stuff, then upgrading a bit. So, Or if you want to wait, wait till then, you'll get some good bargains. Now, Canon is to announce some new RF lenses, a 51.8 STM and the 70-200 F4L IS uh, ultra silent motor. Now both RF obviously for that range. A couple of ch cheaper versions, L's obviously an L lens. That's going to be a bit of a beast. Uh, they reckon that's going to be the size of a Coke can over on Canon Rumors. Now this is CR3, so these are pretty much definites. Uh, next couple of weeks we're going to get this announcement for them. So they're going to that 70 to 200 is going to be a huge lens, compact, small, that big. That's insane. That's like yeah, that's crazy stuff. 
70 to 200, that big at an L lens, even an F4, that'll be very, very nice. Not sure about the price. Right, yo, how was that for a Techtober day? That's what Techtober is all about, just insanity. <laughs> anyway, Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, I've got to get some work done and get this video going so I can get it out for the weekend for you. You all have a fantastic evening. Thanks for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, hook us up, hit the bell, smash the bar, do all the fun stuff in YouTube land. It's free. I'm very cheap. <laughs> I'll catch you all tomorrow. Stay safe. And we'll be coming that way. That way. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.